to the inhabitants of space in general and H.C. in particular. This work is dedicated by a humble native of Flatland in the hope that even as he was initiated into the mysteries of three dimensions, having previously been conversant with only two, so the citizens of that celestial region may aspire yet higher and higher to the secrets of four, five, or even six dimensions, thereby contributing to the enlargement of the imagination and the possible development of that most rare and excellent gift of modesty among the superior races of solid humanity. I am not a plain figure, but a solid. You call me a circle, but in reality I am not a circle, but an infinite number of circles, of size varying from a point to a circle of thirteen inches in diameter, one placed on top of the other. When I cut through your plane, as I am now doing, I make in your plane a section which you, very rightly, call a circle. For even a sphere, which is my proper name in my own country, if he manifest himself at all to an inhabitant of Flatland, must needs manifest himself as a circle. First of all, it's fantastic to live and to be able to zoom in on a piece of wood that might be lying in your garden. I can't allow myself to leave this world without first having said something. When I was 18, I realized that I had an affinity with the language of the visual arts. I wanted to add a self-portrait to this, not a personal self-portrait in the literal sense, but more the idea of a self-portrait, the idea of a construction a fictional self-portrait, a construction found outside the body. A game of chess is something visual and plastic. It is about a mechanism, because there is movement. It is like a drawing, it is a mechanical reality. Neither the pieces nor the game are nice in themselves, but the movements are. It is clearly a mechanism, like the work of Alexander Calder. In the field of motion, the game of chess offers without any doubt very beautiful things, but at a visual level it offers nothing at all. In that sense, the beauty is based on imagining the movement or the gesture. It is all and only present in the mind. One day, on my way, I came upon a plumbing supply store. Various kinds of metal pipes, elbow connections, etc. were arranged in the window. The different elements placed in repetitive rhythmic patterns in contrast to other types gave the window display a musical resonance. It is August in the afternoon, sometime before sunset. I've been living here for some years now when I'm out of town, and for the first time there are no pictures hanging on the walls. I've never lived in such a bare house before, for I've always wanted works of art with me as my faithful companions. Now it seems I'm parting from them. In actual fact, I cherish them in my mind and in my heart, 
I need only half close my eyes to conjure them up. How many have passed through my hands over the years. I very soon became a dab hand at cramming huge paintings into tiny spaces, and I never hesitated to load myself down with sculptures and objects of all kinds. Now I look at my rough hands and I see patches of dermatitis brought about by long contact with the wood of the frames. I would never have thought that one day I might appreciate pristine walls devoid of art in my home. When I was a boy, there wasn't a single square inch of free space on my wall in my family home. It was brimful of paintings, so much so that I used to think we'd be buried alive by them if there happened to be an earthquake, immolated by paintings. In the abstract, the idea rather appealed to me. Images stand or lean or hang with little fanfare next to the coat rack or on the bookcase or over the couch waiting to be noticed. The constellation of things in a home, including images, creates a network of uses and meanings that connects us to a place and grounds us in a sensible reality. An inhabitant explains why the painting of the woods is hidden behind books in his library, while the painting of a leek is visually accessible in the kitchen. The leek attracts me more. Just a leek, no more, no less. It's not pretending to be more than a leek. At the same time, there is only one leek in the painting. The rest of the canvas is almost white. While there is much too much on the image of the woods, you can't see the woods through the trees. There are too many trees. It's also an image that is too representative for a certain reality, as if you would come closer to the woods by hanging an image of the woods in your interior, as if you would like to introduce the woods feeling into your home. With the image of the leak, I don't think I'm introducing a leak feeling at my place. In a room with deep blue walls, two Afghan men were sitting in silence on the long wooden platform that raised the carpet from the well-trodden earth floor. We also sat down. On one wall, dangling from an ancient nail, was a plastic-covered picture. Positioned in an odd way, low and off-center, it was a color page clumsily ripped from a Paris match-type magazine, showing a spacecraft and an astronaut walking in space. Apart from the carpets, it was the only decoration in the whole place.
I think there is here until now for how to do the exposition there. But I think there is here a very interesting drawing selection of Jan Hoot from private collections of friends of mine who are peasants living in the countryside and were farmers before and changed step by step to more cultural activities. But originally they were farmers working with cows and pigs and hay and all what farmers have to do there, and they were involved in art also. So this is a very interesting example of another type of collectioner. I believe that art is universal. I believe that art is autonomous. I believe that art can provoke a dialogue or confrontation one to one, and I believe that art can include every human being. When I write believe, I'm doing it not because I think or know it, not because I can prove it, but because in art, it's a matter of believing. Rule number one, forget all the standard art forms. Don't paint pictures, don't make poetry, don't build architecture, don't arrange dances, don't write plays, don't compose music, don't make movies, and above all, don't think you'll get a happening out of putting all these together. This idea is nothing more than what operas always did, and you see it today in the far-out types of discotheques, with their flashing lights and film projections. The point is to make something new, something that doesn't even remotely remind you of culture. You've got to be pretty ruthless about this, wiping out of your plans every echo of this or that story or jazz piece or painting that I can promise you will keep coming up with unconsciously. Peace campaigner Brian Hoare has been protesting opposite the Palace of Westminster for five years. He began his demonstration in June 2001 against the economic sanctions imposed on Iraq and has remained in Parliament Square ever since, surrounded by a profusion of placards, banners and messages from well-wishers. His presence in this most public of places has become a point of contention defended by those who uphold the right to protest as an assertion of civil liberty and attacked by those who see his campaign as an eyesore, despoiling a landmark of national importance. What I can say is this, the whole curatorial thing has to do not only with exhibitions, it has a lot to do with bringing people together. That is a large part of my work. I've always wanted to make salons for the 21st century. That is my great goal. Bringing people together who wouldn't otherwise meet, to go beyond the fear of pooling knowledge, so to speak. <laughs> 